Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to talk to you about print quality in photos and photo books, the different print technologies from server Halai to digital, the pros and cons, and which one to choose. Roughly a year ago, I uploaded a video about the difference between server halide and digital printing. In this video, I want to talk about the four main print technologies used in photo books today, which is digital offset printers, that is the Intego printer, inkjet printers, laser printers, and server halide printing. So I'm going to talk a little bit more technical about each of these methods, their pros and cons. And in the end, I want to um, give you an answer for some of the most common questions like what's the best quality or which one should I choose? What about longevity? Which one is going to last the longest? Which one is the most environmentally friendly? And so on. So I think these questions are very important nowadays and they definitely influence the way we decide on which company to trust with our business. So I want to clear up a few terms before I start talking just to make sure that we all understand these things. So the first two are color formats, which is RGB and CMYK. So when I'm saying RGB, I'm referring to light. So red, green and blue light, which is basically used in screens and anything that um, presents an image with the help of light. You would never really get RGB in print because for prints you need inks or some kind of dye and that's obviously not using light. When you mix the three lights together, you get white light, which would never happen with uh, printed colors, obviously. So CMYK is what we use in printing, which is cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. And these colors, uh, with the help of a white paper, obviously can make up the same shades as RGB or very similar shades as RGB. Now, when you print anything on a digital printer, RGB photos need to be converted into CMYK the second one is what I mean by digital. When I talk about digital, I'm referring to any print uh, method which transfers ink from one medium to another. So a printer transferring ink onto paper. When I talk about server halide, I'm talking about the chemical process where light is exposed onto a photosensitive or light sensitive um, paper or material which is going to create an image without ink being transferred onto the paper. Obviously there is dye in that paper, but there's nothing being transferred apart from light. And two more things, continuous tone printing and half tone. Continuous tone means that the colors and tones blend seamlessly. So there's no um, boundary or barrier between separate colors and shades. And when you talk about half tone, uh, it's basically a form of image where the colors are made up of tiny particles which can be dots or squares anything and when you look at them from a distance they form a picture or when they are really really small like in you know an inkjet printer then the dots are going to be invisible so you kind of have the impression that you're seeing a continuous image but the image itself is not continuous because it's made up of dots right if you are not interested in the technical aspects of these print methods then you can go right to the end of the video there's going to be a time code in the description below and uh, you can skip to the final questions being answered. But now let's start with the four print methods. So the first one, and by far the most common in photo books and printed books is digital offset printing. So what is digital offset printing? It's not exactly a term, but that's what we use for indigo printers. Offset printing has been around for more than 100 years now in the early 1900s. It works very similarly to the vintage printing press but instead of a flat surface being pressed onto the paper, the inked image is transferred or offset from a plate onto a rubber blanket and from that onto a sheet of paper or a roll of paper. So this method is very, very popular. It's very cost efficient and it's very, very fast and always yields very high consistent quality. The only problem with this is that for every single page or image, you have to create a plate. So when you do um, a large run, like a thousand um, or a, a million copies of something, then it's very cost efficient because you only have to make the plate once and then you can use it for so many 
copies. But if you want to do a one-off job, like printing out one sheet of paper, then creating the plate for each and every page is going to be so time consuming and so expensive that nobody would ever do it. So for that reason, offset printers never took off in on-demand or one-off jobs. And this is where the Indigo printers came in and changed everything. The Indigo printers were invented around 1977 in Israel and later on they were acquired by HP. So what the HP Indigo printers did to offset printing is that they replaced or eliminated the time-consuming and expensive element of the printing process by replacing the plates with basically digital plates. And by that, I mean that instead of creating a plate for every single page, they now have a laser beam which projects the image onto a cylinder which is going to have an electromagnetic charge and this charge is going to attract the electrically charged ink. So uh, the indigo printers are using electro inks which are basically toners suspended in liquid and this means that they can do one-off jobs with just as much efficiency. So these printers are used now all around the world for um, on-demand jobs and small run prints and they can be loaded with seven colors. So CMYK plus three extra colors that can uh, you know yield you a much wider color range. Uh, they became so popular in photo book printing that almost every single budget mid-range photo book is going to be printed in one of these indigo printers and also some very high-end luxury albums still use indigo printers for their photo books. Now what are the pros and cons for the indigo printers? The main pros are that it's very affordable for short run uh, jobs, hence the use in photo books. The second is there is a really wide range of media that you can use with these printers. So lots of paper types, lots of thicknesses. And lastly, they create or print a very sharp image due to the half tone uh, nature of the print. Being a half tone printing method is also a con depending on what results you wish to have. So since the picture is made up of tiny dots it's not going to be completely smooth. Colors obviously need to be converted from RGB to CMYK. The computers are going to do that for you but um, there can be some mismatch so it's not going to be the most natural colors that you can see. Therefore it's not the best for wildlife photography or portrait photography, weddings and so on because the skin tone is not going to be so flawless and natural looking as with uh, silver highlight for example. The second print technology I want to talk about is laser printing. They revolutionized uh, office environments because of their speed and their efficiency and the low cost of printing. They were invented in the 1970s and they have come a long way since then, both in quality and speed and the price has been dropping ever since. Laser printers work by repeatedly passing laser beam on an electrically charged cylinder which is called the drum and this is going to basically you know, create an electrically charged image of what you want to print and that's going to attract uh, to the specific points where it needs to be the uh, electrically charged powdered ink which we call toner. So I know I'm going to get into trouble for saying this but the indigo printers are basically very fancy laser printers. Because they use the same technology creating an electromagnetic field which um, attracts uh, powdered ink but in the case of the indigo printers the toner is suspended in liquid and in the laser printers it's just powdered toner which has to be burned into the paper in the final process and in the case of the indigo printers this fusion occurs before it is put onto the paper. Laser printing has always been associated with great quality text and graphs but they were never really praised for photos and photographs because they struggle to create a nice continuous tone and to create um, nice shadings between colors. Again, as with most printers, laser printers improved a lot and some of the newest ones and the best high-end ones are actually capable of creating really amazing images close to inkjet printers. Despite this, very few companies use laser printers in their photo book production or photo prints. So what are the pros and cons? The pros are obviously very sharp text, very sharp graphics and very cost efficient. The cons are not the most natural colors and not a continuous stone print method. Let's go on to the next one, silver halide. As many of you know, that's one of my favorite print methods because of the beautiful natural colors. So silver halide printing or chromogenic printing, C-print, 
these all mean the same thing, but slightly different technologies. It's been around for more than a hundred years and that's what old school black photography used to be like and then color photography and then exposing light from negatives changed onto exposing um, digital photos onto light sensitive paper. Silver halide is different to all other digital methods because there's no ink being transferred onto the paper, it's light being exposed to light sensitive chemicals. So the silver halide paper is basically made up of multiple layers. There is a base layer and then you've got three layers of gelatin which all have uh, a silver halide emulsion in them with color couplers and when light is exposed to each of these three layers then the silver halide and the chemicals mix which bring out the colors in the paper. After this process uh, they wash off the excess silver halide and uh, there is a final fixing stage as well and basically this is how the colors, the three colors together make up um, a full color image. The most important quality of this print method is the continuous tone transitions. It's beautifully changing colors and tones without any noticeable edges. It also gives you very natural um, skin tone colors. It also creates amazing uh, highlights and shadows, very deep blacks and very, very bright highlights. And the detail in the shadows is going to be uh, preserved better than in digital printing. Silver halide is mainly used in mid-range to high-end photo books because uh, the papers used are more expensive and the binding methods but the silver halide print itself is not very expensive and it's the golden standard in portrait photography, wedding photography, uh, nature, wildlife photography. Colors will look natural and skin tones will look very smooth and flawless. Since the chemically coated paper is substantially thicker than digital papers and also almost if not every uh, photo book using silver halide paper is going to be lay flat bound, it means that these photo books can go up to a maximum of 100, 150 pages as opposed to digital books which can go up to uh, five, six hundred pages. So what are the pros and cons? The pros are obviously the amazing uh, natural colors, continuous tones, very good dynamic range, good shadows, good highlights, and the dye is inside the paper so it's a lot less sensitive to damage like scratches and liquids and so on. What are the cons? So being a continuous stone uh, print method, it's not going to be very sharp compared to digital prints, so not the best choice for graphs, lots of text or architecture. There's a very limited choice of uh, papers available since most of the silver halide papers are produced by Kodak and Fuji. Silver halide printing is not always vegan. Uh, I know it's a weird one to think about because you would think why are my photo books not vegan but as I said silver halide paper includes gelatin. Now I couldn't find any definitive um, answer to all the papers that I was looking at because some of the companies do not state the composition of their silver halide papers. So if your veganism is very important to you and you want to have silver halide books then you need to ask the company who does the books what uh, papers they use and then you need to ask the company who makes the paper whether they use gelatin in these papers. Last but not least, inkjet printing. So this is the one I didn't talk about at all in my previous video and this is the one that in the recent months, years has really creeped into the photo book market and is offering something really new and exciting. So inkjet printers work in a way that there is a print head which has um, liquid ink inside and this ink is being sprayed onto the paper in very, very tiny droplets. And these droplets are going to, or dots, are going to create the final image. So uh, obviously this is a half-tone print method as well. And inkjet printers are quite good with photos. However, if any of you have uh, inkjet printers, you know how expensive ink is and some of these printers are extremely slow. Now this again has changed a lot in the recent years and some inkjet printers use now 8-10 colors so they can create amazing color shades and uh, a wide range of colors. Uh, the large format inkjet printers were mostly used for like um, large format art, wall art like canvases and posters and things like that because the markup on those products is a lot higher and they were also used in very high-end luxury photo books where cost is secondary to the quality of the book. However, recently some companies came up with inkjet printers that work really well in the photo book world 
and one of them, the best one, is the Canon Dream Labo, which uh, revolutionized how uh, high-end photo books are printed. So many luxury photo book companies started using this printer because of the amazing colors and the extra fine print head. And they also use a technology called Fine, which is full photolithography inkjet nozzle engineering. And this creates very, very high quality photos, very similar to silver halide and it's also very, very fast, so it speeds up the production process, making it more feasible for photo books. What are the pros? Super fine ink droplets create the illusion of continuous stone printing. There's a very wide range of colors, huge selection of media. Again, you can print on anything you want to. And the cons? It's still quite relatively expensive compared to other print methods, so it's kind of reserved to the very best quality photo books at the moment and the dynamic range is not quite as good as in server light photo books but it's getting very close to it. So this was my brief technical explanation of the four distinct print methods in the photo book world and now I want to answer some very very common questions regarding these printers and the print quality of photo books and photos. The first one is the most obvious one, which of these print methods gives the best quality? Now, obviously there's no answer to that question because quality is not only dependent on the technology, but also on so many other factors. In the pros and cons mentioned a few minutes ago, I was talking mostly about the advantages and limitations of the technology. However, when you talk about the quality of a photo book or any kind of print, it's not just the technology that matters, but the person who is operating that machinery, how skilled that person is to operate the printer, what kind of inks do they put into that printer, what kind of papers do they use, the paper can make so much difference to the actual process. Also you can see some photo books from the same printer which look amazing and other ones which don't because sometimes the settings can be changed, sometimes there are you know problems with the printers, maintenance. Having said that here are my suggestions. So if your photo books are heavily based on portrait photographs, wedding photography, baby photography, you know anything very professional involving humans or animals or nature, I would suggest to go for silver halide because it looks really really good or you can also go for some of the very high-end new inkjet printers because they come very close in quality and in look. If your photo books are full of text or not very high quality images, a mixture of you know, group selfies and um, buildings and so on, then go for a digital, which by which I mean an indigo printer or a laser printer or inkjet printer because it's going to be a little bit sharper than silver halide. Is more expensive always better quality? Definitely not. So uh, it's tempting to think that very expensive photo books are going to have a much better print quality than cheaper ones. There is some truth in it, but uh, let me give you an example. So silver halide books can be bought for under $40 for like a medium sized photo book. And the same print can also be purchased for around $400. So the difference between those two books, the, the price difference, those extra $360 are going to be mainly spent on the paper quality, the binding, if it's a flush mount album, the cover, if it's a leather cover, and the manual labor going into making that photo book and the marketing. So the actual cost of printing is a small fraction of the price that you pay when you buy a very high-end photo book. Which print is going to last the longest? Now that's a question that uh, many people ask. Um, it's a fair question, although I don't think that many of us will be able to, you know, hold on to these photo books for 70 years, given the nature of our lives uh, these days. But when you look at these companies' um, websites and profiles, they all claim that their prints are going to last 70 plus years and they give a guarantee. Now, I know that there is some science behind those claims, but none of these claims were tested. So most of these printers have been around for 10, 15 years. So how on earth can you guarantee that the print is not going to fade in the next 70 years? Because you haven't seen a single print from that printer which would last 70 years. So I think that's a question that is more rhetorical because we, we can't physically test it. We can hope that it would last, but we don't know for sure. The things that really matter when, you, when you're looking for longevity is to protect the print from sunlight, from damage, and from moisture. 
So basically when you want to buy a photo book that is going to last, you want to look for papers which are acid free, which is going to help to keep the paper safe from moisture and the acids eating away the paper. And you're also wanting to look for papers which are UV coated, which is going to protect the print from uh, damage from the sun, you know, the fading that you see on old photographs when everything goes kind of greenish and magenta. So these are the main things that you want to look out for if you want to keep a photo book for generations. And finally, which technology is the most environmentally friendly? Well, again, this is very, very difficult to answer because the print itself is just a small fraction of the photo book. Most photo book companies use papers from uh, responsibly sourced, um, you know, forests or wherever. But once you start printing on the paper, it might not be recyclable anymore. And most of these photo book papers have some kind of coating like a lustre coat or a high gloss. And these are all plastic. So none of these papers can be recycled anymore. And silver halide is not recyclable at all. Silver halide is considered the least environmentally friendly because of the chemicals involved. But at the same time, uh, laser printers and the indigo printers had their share of criticism for releasing certain gases and let's face it that the inks are not environmentally friendly either. So the good thing about this is that photo books are not really uh, like one use products, they are kind of keepsakes. So we don't have to think of them as a pizza box that once you eat it you have to recycle it. We want to keep them for a long time, we want to look through them. So even if they are not the most uh, ecologically friendly, uh, you can still be nice to nature by keeping it safe and uh, taking care of it. So this was my updated video on print quality in photography and the world of photo books. Hope this made a little bit more sense than the previous one and you understand the difference between all of these prints and printers when you choose your photo book. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'm trying to answer all of them. Thank you very much for listening to this long spiel, uh, but I just really wanted to get into a bit more detail about photography and printing. So uh, thanks for watching and as always, subscribe for more.